before uh, Hugh Crope Sinks was started, I actually ran a record label called Afropubes uh, Records, which was a uh, all cassette label, very topical, uh, and that's that was uh, during high school for me. Afropubes, which uh, I would call AP Records, <laughs> um, because my mom for some reason didn't understand what Afropubes were, uh, and would. Um, sort of mentioned to her friends very proudly that um, <laughs> her son ran a record label called Afropubes and they would look, you know. So. Well, if you're, getting, if you're getting packages in the mail that says Afropubes on it, <laughs> your mom's probably like, what the hell? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> right when I was entering college, I started meeting um, more bands that wanted to put out releases that, you know, had a better chance of being distributed um, and uh, getting into stores and stuff like that and that was um, somewhat difficult with cassette tapes and at that time um, see like producing mass amounts of CDs was coming down in price and so I think that's when I sort of said to myself you know I still want to keep doing this but I want to sort of wipe the slate clean and, and maybe start with uh, you know a new name and sort of doing stuff on a little bit more of a grandiose scale. A couple years into Hugh Krupp's Inc. is when I realized how um, how much money a label could cost and uh, how much time it could take as well. Um, and so, you know, I think just talking to Andy about that throughout the first few years of the label, I think we just felt it would be a good idea to, to join up. After, um, I think about two or three years ago, we released uh, a CD that uh, really dried up the funds. Um, and um, we started to think twice about, you know, how much money do we want to keep pouring into the label? You know, we really like releasing things by bands that we like, um, and we like promoting them to the fullest extent possible. but. Um, we don't like, you know, <laughs> using all of our personal funds, and, and we don't like how much time we're spending on this. We'd rather spend some time on some new things, you know. So, also, you know, we're, we're saying to ourselves, we want to keep doing this. So how do we keep doing this but spend less money and, and less time? Um, and so that's how we sort of came to cassettes, you know. Um, cassettes were a way to work with artists, um, in a way that sort of tore down many of the like the fiscal barriers um, and also some of the time barriers because we would be printing uh, less of a quantity it's less stressful to you know sell the entire quantity you know and so uh, cassettes were just sort of a, a, a real logic, logical solution to our, our problem. I mean you could make a tape and it could be you could spend like a hundred bucks 150 bucks and make like 50 or 75 tapes and they'll look awesome like they'll, they look good like the packaging looks good the tape looks professional right so in terms of media that might be one of the last media out there that uh, you could do a, a small run of something and do it cheap and have it look really good Andy and I have never been too good at art I mean, I, I'm okay at art, but Andy's horrible at yeah, I mean, artwork. Yeah, I mean... But, I mean, I think even when we were doing CDs, um, we always left the art to the band, so whether yeah. they would do it themselves or that they would have um, someone they know do the artwork. I mean, you know, there's there's some labels, obviously, that have, you know, artistic talents. Uh, that's I don't think that's ever been our, our strength. No, not really. But, you know... I, I think both of us always agreed that we would never want to force any sort of art concept on, on a band, and so we would just go to them and say, take it from there, and luckily we've never had any problems with it. Yeah, and I think bands too, um, they, they, they're good at knowing people who could do really good artwork for them. Um, I, there might have been like maybe one or two bands that consulted, that talked to us to see you know, who could, who could you guys get to do artwork for us, but I think for the most part, a lot of the bands either had someone in the band to do it or knew of someone who could, you know, do a really good job. I'm just looking at this. Recording music has is becoming, you know, 
extremely easy, more easy than it's ever been in the past. And I, and I think releasing music is more easy than it's ever been in, in, the, in the past. And because of that, I think musical formats like cassettes and um, uh, zip drives or, or all these sort of, you know, um, either uh, retro or very unique musical formats, I think it, you know, having um, this this ease of, of recording and releasing really uh, gives the chance for them to exist into the future, right? Because I, I think there's always a situation where uh, cassettes could be um, the appropriate um, medium to release something on, or you know, CD could a CDR could be the appropriate medium. You know, I mean, I, I'd like to think that it it it, it will sort of uh, stay there or even even grow as you know more people record music and more people release music I think with the internet there's there, there might be like such a pressure to have something like come out that's so professional looking but that costs money right so maybe with a cassette if it doesn't cost as much money you could still you know get something have someone start small kind of work their way up where they're doing cassettes maybe they'll do what other whatever formats out there in you know a couple of years if it's a format, if it's just digital and people are listening to everything on their, you know, cell phones or whatnot. But I think with cassettes, it, it could be a very good starting point for people that are younger, you know, to start to release their friends' bands and stuff like that. Cavity. Cavity was a good band.